Hi, I'm Betty Belenis, folklorist and curator at the Smithsonian Center for Folklife and Cultural Heritage. For the past two years, I've been researching American ginseng with my colleague Arlene Reiniger and our interns. I'd like to share a story that starts with a plant specimen and connects its collector to our very own field research. I apologize, but I'll need to refer to my notes so, so I don't forget any details. During this project, we've done field research throughout the Appalachian region because that's where American ginseng grows. Exactly what is American ginseng, you may ask? It's a plant native to the Appalachian region with a great deal of cultural and economic significance. It's been a source of extra income for families in the region since the late 1700s when the U.S. began trade with China. What does China want with our ginseng? You may also ask. As it happens, American ginseng is highly valued in China for its use in traditional medicine. Wild ginseng roots from the Appalachian Mountains are considered to be the most powerful. Naturally, they're the most sought after. I could go on for hours and hours about American ginseng and its history and culture, but I've got to get to the story. It starts here at the Smithsonian, at our very own herbarium. Among the thousands of dried plant specimens are 70 specimens of American ginseng, but only one of them was collected by a woman. Who was that woman? Well, her name was E. Lucy Brown. Who was E. Lucy Brown, we wanted to know. Well, it turns out it's not hard to find out because she's pretty famous in botany and conservation circles. Google her and you'll see what I mean. As you can see, this specimen was collected by Brown in 1903. We learned that Brown was born in 1889 in Cincinnati. So this specimen would have been collected when she was only 14 years old, if we do that math. Brown's family encouraged her and her sister Annette to explore nature and collect specimens of plants and insects from a young age. It was sort of a fashionable thing for young ladies to do back then. This interest in nature led Annette to become the first and Lucy the third woman to receive a PhD in science from the University of Cincinnati. E. Lucy Brown went on to become a prominent and accomplished botanist, conservationist, and author. We're also curious about Lucy and Annette's field research in the Appalachian region. At the Smithsonian Archives, our intern, Bailu Boutillon, found an album of photos documenting the Brown sisters in the field in the 1930s. We can see that they had to tramp around pretty rough terrain and the wild woods of the south southeastern Kentucky hills during their research. Lucy studied trees and understory plants, and Annette studied insects. We read how the sisters interacted with local families, locating trails through the forests and even staying in some of their homes. We also learned how the sisters had to skirt around illegal whiskey stills hidden in the deep woods. From our own interviews, we know that making and selling moonshine has carried many a mountain family through hard times, and so has digging and selling wild ginseng roots. Naturally, we felt a kind of kingship with the Brown sisters and their field adventures in the Appalachian forest. We've been there, and we've also interacted with the kind and knowledgeable people there. They still welcome those with a genuine interest in and love of the culture and the natural world of their beautiful region. Hopefully, we'll be able to get back into the field this fall, following in the footsteps of the Brown sisters and having our own new ginseng adventures. Thanks for listening. Check out the links for more information. Bye.